Welcome to another episode of Create, Inspire, Convert. I'm so glad to be with you today because I'm going to be talking with you about mindful marketing and I can't wait to dig into this topic. If you've ever wondered how you can ethically, responsibly, and mindfully sell and market your business, this episode is going to demystify it for you. Hi there. Welcome to Create, Inspire, Convert podcast for business owners and marketers who are looking to deepen their knowledge about creative and experience-focused online marketing. I'm your host, Amanda Rosen. Let's get to this week's episode. Hey, I'm so glad to have you with me here today. We're going to go deep on the topic of mindful marketing. It really feels especially relevant right now, given the civil rights movement we are currently watching unfold worldwide, which is so exciting, amazing, and absolutely cannot stop. As marketers and business owners, we have a really unique role in this movement to help keep that momentum going, and it's through mindful marketing. So I'm going to get a little bit on my soapbox right now for a minute to give you some context to what I'm saying. Marketing plays a huge role in perpetuating systemic racism, like full stop, I'm just going to say it because it's true. From the imagery chosen or not chosen, to the words used or not used, to the targeting, the messaging, it all plays a role in perpetuating systemic racism or helping eliminate systemic racism. This past week, we've seen company after company called out for racist practices. We've also seen company after company stand up and say, here's what we believe in, here's where we can do better. And I don't think that trend will stop, and I hope it doesn't stop. And it's on us as consumers to hold brands accountable for their actions. Like These are things that we need to remember and file in our brain and follow up with in time and see, are they actually following through on these statements? Did this company really take ownership? And then from a business and marketing perspective, we need to stop thinking of these things as passive actions or hashtags that you jump on the bandwagon of and that you're truly going to approach your organization, no matter how big or small it is, in ways that can make change. Marketing is not a passive action that brands do to get the word out about what they're up to, okay? Marketing can have a good side or a dark side to it, and that dark side or good side is 100% influenced by a brand's values and beliefs because ultimately the job of marketing is to tell a story and that story has two parts. One part is about the company. It's about the products and services that they offer. It's about what they do. It's about the transformation and that transformation that I just mentioned, that's the other part of the story because that part of the story is about the customer. The customer is fully expecting that brand to not only talk about the transformation as it relates to them specifically, but as it relates to how they perceive the world around them. So when a brand believes its product is meant for only a certain group of people, the marketing puts that messaging out there. And by a certain group of people, I don't really mean like only, you know, moms or something like that. I'm talking about when you are marketing your business in a way that makes it unattainable or puts a message out there that if you have a different skin tone or if you have a different religion or anything like that, we're not for you. So this means as marketers, we have the ability to change the tide. And as business owners too, we have the ability to influence. It doesn't matter how big or small your business platform is. Even as a person, you have a platform because you probably know more than one person. We have the ability to ask why, why are we doing these things? Why are we saying this? Why are we not saying this? And spark conversations around all of these choices being made. And of course, business owners have the same opportunity to reflect on the practices we've been using to market or sell, to revisit the words we've used, to look at our targeting, to look at the messaging, look at the branding, look at the whole picture and open our hearts and minds to blind spots and then be determined to make changes. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And this whole thing, this whole thing about mindful marketing, this is like 1 million percent why I do what I do. This is why I left corporate America. This is why I help my clients do this work. It's incredibly important because here's the thing. I believe good marketing can change the world one business at a time. Now, let me explain. And this is actually going to get us into the heart of the episode. So I'm imagine me stepping now off of my soapbox and now we're going to talk about mindful marketing. Okay. All right. So mindful marketing is customer centric. End of story. It's not about profit at all. That's it. It's about focusing on the ways in which your business can serve a customer. 
So when you start to think about your business this way, you realize that the products and services are not actually very important. They're just how you achieve your customer-centered goal. So it really could be anything. What matters is how you are changing someone's life. What feelings are you giving them? How are you empowering them? Or are you disempowering them? Like that's a question you need to ask yourself, especially right now. How are you helping them move forward? This means it's incredibly important to get dialed into who you serve and why you serve them. It's a total mindset shift from the common way of doing business, which is very profit driven. So let's talk about an example of this. Let's say you're an author. You write books. That's what you physically do and how you spend your time. But you don't really write books because you like words or because you like paper or because you're like super duper into editing and publishing. No, those are just parts of your job. That is not your why. The reason you write books is because you have a very specific message or story that you feel pressure to get out into the world. You want the story or message that you have to influence someone in some way. You want to make them feel something. This is your why. Now go a little bit even deeper. Maybe you specifically want to influence moms around how they view themselves. You want to uplift them. That is who your why is for. So that's where you start. When you are thinking about mindful marketing and making this shift in your business, you start with who your why is for. You start with the who and the why, and then you build the product or service from there because you don't really know what to sell, what to write, what to do until you're clear on who you're serving and why you're serving them. That is mindful marketing. Now here's why this works. When you operate your business this way, people feel seen and heard by you. They feel understood. They feel connected and cared for, which means they don't even care if you're selling peanuts. They just want more of what you're putting down because you are creating a community of people who are all sharing the same vibe with you. This builds loyalty. It builds trust. It builds longevity. And ultimately, it builds legacy and a business that you can be proud of because you created it out of a desire to serve and you're truly making a difference in someone's life. And then guess what? The money comes as a result of that. So it's a totally different way of looking at it. Instead of starting with like, okay, I want to make X amount of money. It's I want to change X number of lives. So let's talk about a bigger example that you may be more familiar with. One of the most interesting stories I've ever heard about this, like as an example, was on an episode of Social Media Examiner, which is, by the way, an awesome podcast that you should totally subscribe to. The host, Michael Stelzner, was interviewing Duncan Wardle, who is the former head of innovation and creativity at Disney. So this is episode number 395, if you want to give it a listen. During the interview, Duncan shared a time when Disney World was experiencing a downturn in growth. I think this was in like 2011. So of course, his job as head of innovation was to fix it. So they could have done things like raise ticket prices, made longer hours, run special promotions. And while of course these would have solved the problem, they would have compromised the experience and they actually didn't even really address the root issue. So in some cases, it would have compromised the park experience, like more people would mean more waiting time, for example. Or in other cases, it would have compromised employee experience. Longer hours means longer days and probably no more pay for it since they were down in profit. So Disney didn't do any of these things. Instead, they went to their customers, the people that they were attracting to the park, and they got down to their why. Why do these people love Disney? Disney parks so much. So what they did was they went to people's homes and they interviewed them and they tapped into these like hidden desires that their ideal clients had that they had never really considered before because prior to this, they were profit driven. So they were always looking at numbers and what they were measuring was always around profit. So I'll tell you what they discovered because it is really cool. They discovered that Disney parks were so powerful because they tapped into a parent's desire to keep their children small or to remember them at a time when they were small. So if you don't have kids and you can't resonate with this example, think of it this way. You've probably had a really amazing experience at some point in your life, maybe like a vacation or like a super awesome meal, and you just wanted to delay it ending as much as possible. It was very special to you, so you took care to remember remember the details, remember the feelings, and not rush through what was happening. That is the overarching concept of this. 
time at the park meant creating memories of childhood that a parent could hold on to for a lifetime. So they tapped into this deeper need that their ideal client didn't even necessarily like consciously realize that they had and was not really articulating, but that was the deep inner motivation. Because the truth is, parents like they don't care about the new attraction Disney has. I know I don't. I really don't care about that. I hope to take my kids to Disney one day because I want to create memories with them. Same idea. We care about holding on to memories that prolong those fleeting days of when children are small. So that's what they ended up doing at Disney was transforming their culture from being product centric or profit driven to customer centric. And they changed this at every level. They changed policies and procedures to encourage employees at every level to understand and empathize this deeper need behind who they were serving with their park. I hope this is making sense and that you can start to think how you can apply the same lesson, the same concept into your business. Now, before we wrap up, I have one more point that I want to make. As you begin thinking about how you can market mindfully by transforming your business to be customer centric, you're going to have to ask yourself the question, what values and beliefs am I putting out into the world? Because here's the thing. If you really want to operate your business in this way, your values and beliefs have to be on full display. That's how you convey your messaging. An example of valuing profit over people would be to raise prices and put that in your messaging, like our prices are going up, and then ignore the complaints and just carry on because you met your bottom line, you made some money, you're moving forward. Another example of valuing profit over people would be to discount products or services, but then build that discount back in through fees or surcharges or have made it to begin with an artificial discount. Another example would be to have fake deadlines. We've all seen those where oh no, quick, act now, the cart's closing, only to find out that it was a fake deadline because you ran across it like a week later and the cart was still almost closing. All of these tactics are examples of things that value profit over people. They're examples of the values that that company has. That company cares more about making money than helping people. So your challenge is going to be ensuring that the physical actions you're taking The words you're using, all of it, jives with the value of putting people over profit, experience over revenue, and mindful consideration above all. Because I'm going to say this one more time, just in case you didn't catch it the first time. When you operate your business this way, you're going to find out something that the gurus who sell all of those products and services don't want you to know, that your business is going to be even more profitable than you ever could have imagined. Because people will happily spend money with someone who works for them, not against them. By championing, by championing, I can't say that word, by putting your customer's experience first and viewing them as people and not dollar signs, you're going to build something that's pretty awesome. So my challenge to you, my dear listener, is to visit your culture, visit your practices, visit your values and beliefs, visit all of it. What are you putting out there? Look at the comments that you're receiving. Look at the replies to emails, examine all of it and get a feel for what you're building. And if you've never written down a values and beliefs statement for your business, guess what? Now's the time. You're going to go do it. If you have a profit-focused mission statement, it's time to rewrite it. If you've been approaching marketing from the mindset of ROI first, how can you pivot by asking yourself, what happens if we first look at how we help? Now, Not to hop back on that soapbox, but I kind of will. So I 100% believe as marketers and business owners, we have an ethical responsibility to use our platforms wisely and in the best interest of the people we serve. I mean, like full stop, you will never convince me otherwise. That's it. And I will never compromise on that. It doesn't matter if you're a Fortune 500 conglomerate, a mom and pop restaurant in a tiny city. We all have influence and we all have a responsibility to one another and marketing is a way we can get that message out there. Okay, that wraps it up for today. So I hope you found this episode helpful and valuable, and I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts. So you can find me on social media as Amanda M. Rosen or Amanda M. Rosen Marketing on Facebook. You can drop me an email at hello at createinspireconvert.com. And I hope you have a wonderful week and I will see you next time.